What is up, everybody? This is Brian with the Mustard and Mayo, and I am coming at you from Old Fort, North Carolina. Um, you can see I've got the uh, F80, the M3, back with me today. And uh, today is going to be my uh, final kind of route planning and route scrubbing for the uh, next Mega Meet uh, coming up here in a couple weeks on July 23rd. Uh, my birthday is actually July 26th. So this is kind of the summer meet that I like to do is kind of a birthday party, I guess. Don't bring presents. There's not going to be balloons or anything, but I'd rather have a car meet and go spend time in the mountains and have birthday anyway. But um, anywho, uh, this is going to be the start point. It's, uh, you can actually see there's not much in Old Fort, but there is a Lowe's over here behind me. The uh, What I'm going to put on the address, though, is this uh, Farmer's Home Furniture Store, which is behind me. As you can see, there's uh, I'm here on a Thursday, and there's tons of parking here at the edge of the parking lot. There is uh, right behind me, there is a some restaurant, but there's like a McDonald's and a Wendy's and a few things, gas stations and stuff right along this area. So this is going to be a great spot to start and kind of meet everybody and maybe get like a breakfast biscuit and a coffee and stuff like that before we uh, head up the drive. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys just a brief overview of the route, and then uh, we'll check in throughout the day and kind of show you the stops and the roads we're going to be on. And uh, I think it's going to be a great meet and probably going to be one of my favorite routes, honestly. Uh, and as you can see right here, this is the overview of the route, um, starting out south over here in Marion and ending up all the way where you can see those G, H, and I letters um, over in Tennessee. So we'll kind of zoom right into the start point. You can see we're going to meet right off US 70. Um, there is a Lowe's, which is easy to spot. There's a McDonald's and everything. But you can see where the parking lot is. There is a farmer's home furniture store. And the area that's just right here in the southeast port or southwest portion by the 30 minutes um, this is all huge open parking lot especially i imagine it's going to be uh, pretty dead on a sunday morning so plenty of room to park you can see there's a couple different stores here for uh, like breakfast like i'm probably going to get a you know a couple things from mcdonald's or something like that there are some gas stations there's you know stuff all down through here so if you need to top off before we leave you can uh, you can see once we pull out of the parking lot, we're going to turn right onto US 70. We're going to go just a couple of miles, if that, and then you'll see the first road we're going to work on is Highway 80. Now, Highway 80, as you can see, kind of starts out down in the low valley area. And right about the time that you get to the dam here, the Lake Tahoma Dam, uh, which if you're kind of paying attention to, you can see it from the road. But right around here is where the uh, fun parts of the road start. So you can see here's an 80 is one of my favorites. It's just a nice windy twisty. It's a kind of like a mountain climb, especially back through here. These little S's are just, you know, so fun to go through. Then you can see the last few chicane or uh, hairpins that'll take us up to the Blue Ridge Parkway. Now, if you're not careful, this little turn on the Blue Ridge Parkway can be easily blown right past um, because it's a very sharp left turn. You can see there's a couple, there's like a little uh, on-ramp type thing that's maybe 40 feet long and then you kind of merge up to the Blue Ridge Parkway and then we're going to go north or east on the Blue Ridge Parkway. We're going to basically take a right. Now the very first stop, which is a fun uh, moment for photography, is right here on the left. There is a big overlook here on the left. Um, I wonder if I could switch. I don't know if I can switch to the, uh, the view. Let's get a satellite view going. There we go. So there is actually a really nice overlook that uh, we can kind of cram everybody into. It'll be tight, but we've definitely been able to fit everybody in there. There's a really nice view off the side. And then kind of zooming back out, you can see from the next little leg, we'll actually be on the parkway for quite a bit. I want to say it's about 30 minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer on the parkway. And this is going to take us all the way past where 226A is, which I left off this drive. But you can see right there, it's not super long of a road. But it is a fun road, and if you live in the area or not far, it's really easy to make a loop out of 226 over here on the right, and then 226A, and just kind of do a big loop here. So that's a fun way to go. But we're going to pass by a little Switzerland this time around, which is a good place to check out. Um, in the future, if you want to come back, there's a uh, like a hotel resort thing and all kinds of Airbnbs and lodges all through there. Um, so we're going to um, go all the way here. We're going to continue on the parkway, continue on the parkway. Um, all the way, where are we at? Yeah, quite a bit of parkway driving as you can tell here. All right, so this is where it gets a little weird looking. So as you can see, once we get up to here, um, this is gonna be right over by the uh, Lynn Cove Viaduct, which is actually this section of road right here. 
There is a pull off over here on the right side of the road that is nowhere near big enough to fit everybody, but it's gonna be a good enough spot just to kind of whip in here to the right and then uh, button hook backwards, basically pull a U-turn because we'll go the opposite direction on the viaduct, which you can see is all right through here. This is where the actual bridge of the viaduct is. We'll follow the viaduct all the way back to the visitor center, which has a, a pretty easy road to navigate into and tons of parking. You can see there's a ton of parking here. I figured we'll either back into the parking spots here or cram into the little bus parking. Just depends on what all's there. Um, they do have restrooms. I'm not sure if they're going to have the actual building open or not, but they did have a bunch of porta johns stuff like that, um, which will be there. So this will be a good spot to kind of just take a breather. Uh, you can actually go down this little trail here and go to the underside of the, you can see the trail mark right there. You can go to the underside of the viaduct, which is kind of cool. Uh, definitely worth checking out. So that'll be our second place to kind of regroup and grab some photos and make sure everybody gets a chance to check out the viaduct for the first time. Um, so this is where the maps get a little bit retarded and I've tried to do everything I can to fix it. Um, but we are not going to be doing this really long loop into Linville and back onto the parkway. I don't know why the maps are just struggling so hard, but yeah, as you can see, there is a, uh, off ramp right off the Blue Ridge Parkway, right down the road from where we're going to be getting out from. That's going to basically hook us right down onto Sewer says Blue Ridge Parkway access point right down to where 221 is. So this route that says 156 miles is actually quite a bit shorter uh, when you take out the extra, you know, 10 or 15 miles for this bogus route that it's doing. So this is one point you just have to kind of follow the group and pay attention. But as you can see, we'll take a left on the 221. Um, and then this is going to take us on the, I guess you could call this the second, maybe third road if you include the Blue Ridge Parkway. Now this is a pretty cool winding road. I've got some video of it also. But 221 is basically going to take us all the way into Blowing Rock. You can see for the most part, it kind of parallels the Blue Ridge Parkway for a lot of this. Um, but it's a lot more fun. There's actually some really good corners through there. Now, as we get closer to Blowing Rock, there's definitely some houses and stuff. So we'll have to chill out a little bit. But as we come into Blowing Rock, as long as there's uh, no issues with the schedule, uh, we'll be going down and taking a right on the main highway and going down to Wheelie's Refresher. So as you can kind of see here, there seems to be plenty of good parking here. Um, I think I was doing a street view um, thing where you can see there's a, some extra parking here. And I think there's something in this dirt lot across the street now too. So we should be able to get most of us in the parking lot here. But if not, there's plenty of parking that's around the area. But this looks like a really good kind of casual lunch spot. There's a big porch you can sit on. And there's actually a pretty nice view down over the mountains. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so once we're done with lunch, and this is a good spot if anybody needs to take a break and go grab gas or something, we'll definitely have some gas stations in the area. Um, but we'll continue back on. We'll head back up north like we're heading to Boone. But as you can see, right before we get into Boone, which you can see is just right here in the center, we're going to cut over here on this Highway 105. And this is going to be kind of the long way. We have to get all the way up to 421. So there's a little bit of a, a gap in, in kind of the fun roads here. It's mostly just kind of some highways and when I drove this the other day, there was a lot of, uh, there was like three or four uh, sheriff deputies that were monitoring speeds. And it's like, I think 45 to 50 mile, mile, mile an hour speed zones through here. But as you can see, as we get up into 421, uh, once you get past this Mountain City area, this is where the really fun parts of 421 start. So you can see at this point, we're going to be in Tennessee. I love 421, man. I can't wait to share it with y'all that haven't done it before. But this is a fantastic road. I mean, look at these hairpins. They just go literally right over top of each other. So cool, uh, really nice little hairpin here. Also, I forget what was there in the middle. It was like some weird cabins or something like that. And I was like, man, I wonder what it'll be like to live there on the inside of a hairpin. But anywho, uh, as we continue on, you'll actually see that we will pass by the Shady Valley Country Store on the first go around. And we'll actually continue on to 421, which has a lot more to give on this northern section. And as we continue on, we'll basically end right over here. There's a big marina. Um, I don't know how busy it's going to be on a Sunday with boats and trucks and stuff. Um, so I figured what we'll do is just kind of use this parking lot as a grouping staging area just so we can kind of like in this area here, get everybody turned around and head back down 421. And then we'll take that all the way down to the kind of first official ending, if you will, of the drive, which will be right over here at the Shady Valley Country Store. All right. So it's a few hours later from when I last saw you guys, but I am up in Shady Valley, Tennessee. I'm actually right outside the 421 Country Store. It's been here for a long time, actually right across the street because there's actually a couple of closed businesses right now. Well, this one behind me is uh, 
out of business it's not open right now and then the one that's just right over here looks like also a gas station with the big silo there um, they are going to be closed on sundays so let me show you why that's important so there's the country store uh, which has got a little restaurant in there and it looks like they're out of gas right now but they've got uh, ethanol free gas normally in the pumps um, there's not a whole lot of parking there and as you can imagine it's going to be pretty full with motorcycles probably on a weekend but if you look right across the street here there's a huge wide open parking lot here that we should be able to cram everybody in and i bring it up because if you look right here on the sign they are closed on sundays so this will be the perfect spot to uh kind of park hang out and go buy some t-shirts and stickers and whatnot now for those that want to head out they're welcome to head out from here um, or once everybody's got a chance to go into the store and you know maybe get a a snack or a soda or use the restroom or whatever then uh, we'll actually head on it's about 10 to 15 minutes give or take i think it's like 12 or 13 on the maps over here to the backbone rock which is a really cool rock formation um you can kind of see it here in the photos but there's some really neat and pretty easy trails to get up on the top of the rock you can see where it actually juts out here um there's a park with picnics and uh, restroom and all kinds of stuff through there. So that'll be the last official, uh, I guess, end of the meet. There's parking all over in this area. So this is gonna be one of those things we just have to cram in. There's a lot of street side parking here in the dirt. It's kind of hard to see in this, but there is a parking lot here also that we should be able to get everybody in, no problem. I think there's a little bit extra on road parking down the sides here, but this is a really cool spot to check out and get some photos and stuff. And then uh, for those that want to, cause I know that I'll be driving back to Asheville, the way back to Asheville is actually going back to the country store and then taking this Highway 91, which for those that care, actually have some really good corners. I didn't shoot any video when I did this before and it's not part of my official drive, but it was a pretty fun little back road that connected me all the way down into Johnson City through Elizabethan and stuff like that. So for those of us that uh, are still gonna be hanging around, I'm probably gonna go find a brewery or something like that around Johnson City, uh, cause I know there are a couple of restaurants or something, get some dinner before coming home. But yeah, I'm pretty impressed. I'm, this is gonna be a super fun uh, drive. It's actually some of my favorite roads that are east of Asheville, especially with 421 and 80, and then getting a chance to share this 221 with everybody. So pretty excited about it. Um, feel free to watch some of the longer versions of the driving videos that I'll have uh, posted up if you wanna see more about these roads. But as well, thanks very much for watching and have a great day.